Today we're going to take a look at the death core component. The death core component is responsible for listening to when the entity's health reaches zero and then doing something accordingly. So for an enemy, it might be informing the enemy manager to add this enemy back into its object pool so that it can be respawned and reused later. And for the player, it might trigger a game over screen or respawn the player at the previous checkpoint. So the death core component itself is more so responsible for listening to when the entity's health reaches zero. And then children classes of the death core component will be responsible for doing those specific things. So in this part, we're just going to focus on the base death core component. My name is Heinrich, welcome to Barden, and let's get into it. So to start off with, let's just go ahead and create the script. We'll come to our script folder, core, and then in our core components folder, we'll go ahead and create a new C sharp script. We'll call this one death. Let's go ahead and open that up. So to start off with, we do not need any of the pre-generated code. And we can also go ahead and get rid of the first two using statements, leaving only the using Unity engine. And now again, because this is a core component, we're going to inherit from core component instead of mono behavior. Now I mentioned that the death core component is responsible for listening for when the entity's health reaches zero. So how do we listen for this? We could do something as simple as giving the death core component access to the stats core component, and then in the update loop, simply checking to see if the current health is zero or not. But this isn't the optimal way to go about that. Instead, we're going to be using events. Let's take a look at our stats core component real quick. So in here, in our decrease health function, you can see that we first decrease our current health by some amount, and then we check to see if this current health is less than or equal to zero. Now currently we simply clamp the health to be zero, and then we log that the entity's health is zero. So here is an optimal place for the stats core component to inform anything else that cares that the health has reached zero. Now this isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial on events, I'll summarize some things, and I'll include some links to great tutorials on events and delegates in the description. So we'll be using an event to notify other things that care that the health has reached zero. But let's just have a quick discussion about what an event actually is. So events in C-sharp are used by classes or objects to notify other classes or objects when something of interest has happened. The class that raises the event is called the publisher, and the classes that handle the event are called subscribers. So basically, a class can use an event to notify the world when something happens and classes that care about knowing when that thing happens can subscribe to that event. The benefit of this is that the class that raises the event does not need to know anything about any other class that might be interested in that information. All it knows is the information itself. So using events allow us to decrease the dependency between classes. However, the classes that do care about that information need to know about the class that raises the event in order to subscribe to it. So we're going to look at how to implement an event in our stats class in just a second. But first, let's quickly talk about what a delegate is. So a delegate is a type. It represents references to methods or functions that have a particular parameter list and return type, otherwise known as the method signature. When you create a function, it has a function signature. The signature is made up of the input parameters and the return type of the function. So you can use a delegate to store references to multiple functions that have the same signature as the delegate, so that when you invoke that delegate, you essentially call all those functions. This basically allows us to pass functions around as if they were variables. Now, the last thing we need to talk about before we create this event is the action delegate. So the action delegate is a default delegate that ships with C sharp. It represents a function that has between zero and 16 input parameters, and that returns void. This is a very useful delegate as it covers a very wide variety of use cases, including ours, meaning that we don't need to create our own delegates just yet. But it's just interesting to understand what a delegate actually is. Now, before we actually implement this event, let's go back to our death core component and just quickly finish the code there. So the main part of our death core component is going to be the die function. So we can just say public void die. 
And this is the function that the child classes will override to implement specific behaviors for their respective death core components. But for now, all we're gonna do in this function is simply set the object to be disabled. So we can say core.transform.parent. So this takes us to the root of our entity, or it should, if your core is set up the same way. Then we can say dot game object to get that specific game object. And then finally, dot set active and pass in false. So this will simply disable the entity when the die function is called. Another thing I want the base death core component to be responsible for is playing the death particles. So we already created these particles in previous episodes. We have two different particles. We have one that is the chunk particles and one that is the blood particles. So we have two different particles that we want to spawn when the entity dies. So let's come up to the top of the class and let's create an array where we can store these particles. We'll start off with a serialized field to make it available in the inspector. And then we'll say private game object array, and we'll just call it death particles. Now to be able to spawn these particles, we need to have a reference to our particle manager core component that we created in the previous episode. So let's just create a private particle manager call it particle manager with a lowercase p. And then above this, we'll create a private particle manager with an uppercase p. And this one is simply going to return the lowercase particle manager if it is not null. And if it is null, it'll set the reference for us. So in here we can say particle manager with the lowercase p, question mark, particle manager, colon, core dot get core component with a reference to our particle manager. So with that variable created, we can come back to our die function. And in here, before we disable the game object, let's go ahead and spawn all those particles. So to do that, we need to loop through our death particles array. And we'll do that with a for each loop. So for each bar particle in death particles. So we're going to look at each game object in that array. We can then call particle manager dot start particles. Now these particles we just want to spawn at the origin and without any sort of extra rotation of the entity. So all we need to pass in is our particle. So now when the die function is called, we'll loop through the particles, spawn them, and then we'll disable this entity. So if that's set up, we're ready to go back to our stats core component. Now we're ready to go ahead and implement that event. So let's come up to our variables. Let's go ahead and put our events at the very top. It doesn't really matter. So here we create a public variable. We're then going to add the event keyword. And all this does is it simply declares that this variable is an event in a publisher class. It does some other things like it acts like a read only where we cannot reassign this variable. We can only add to it or remove from it, but it's pretty standard in declaring events. We then need to give the event type or the delegate that we want to use. In this case, our event type is action. Now you can see here that it's telling me that action is in the system namespace. So if I go ahead and hit enter, you'll see that using system.collections.generic has been added back to our core component. We then need to give our event a name. I'm just going to call it on health zero. And this is, as far as I can tell, a pretty standard way of naming an event. You start with on and then whatever condition caused the event to be fired. So the event had to be public so that we can access it from other classes in order to subscribe to it. Now, in order to fire off this event or invoke it, we can come to our decrease health function. And after we set our health to zero, let's go ahead and say on health zero, question mark dot invoke. So what that does is it just calls all the functions that are stored in this on health zero delegate. The question mark is here for the case where there are no functions there. So nothing has subscribed to this event yet. If this question mark was not here, then we would get an error. So we're just doing a null check before we try to invoke it. Okay, so let's come back to our death core component so we can subscribe to this event. Now, the first thing we need is a reference to our stats core component. So we'll declare a private stats, call it stats with lowercase s, 
And then like we did before, private stats, stats with an uppercase S, and this is going to return stats, question mark, stats, or core dot get core component with a reference to our stats, like that. Now, where do we actually subscribe to this event? Usually you would subscribe in the awake function or the start function. But one thing to note is that if you subscribe to an event and you disable the object where the script is attached, you will get errors. So if an event has a reference to a function that no longer exists and it tries to call it, it'll throw an error. So you need to make sure that you unsubscribe events also if an object gets destroyed or disabled or something like that. So rule of thumb is you want to subscribe to an event in the on enable function and unsubscribe from an event in the on disable function. So let's come after our die function and let's call the on enable function. And then here, all we need to do is simply say stats with the uppercase S dot on health zero plus equals and then the function that we want to call when this event is invoked. In this case, it's simply our die function. Now notice that when you give a function to an event, you don't include your brackets at the end. Now we can do the same thing with our on disable function. So we say on disable and then stats dot on health zero. And this time it's simply minus equals die. Now we have one potential issue and it is a sequencing issue. On enable is called right after the awake function. So because our core components add themselves to the cores reference list in their respective awake functions, it means that we might call this on enable on our death core component before the stats awake has been called, meaning that we might try to access stats here which then looks in the core component to get this reference to the stats before the core knows about this stats reference. So we might want to make this get core component function a little bit more robust. Let's just control click on that to go take a look at it. You can see what we're doing here is we're looking through our list of core components to see if we can find this core component. And if we do not, we simply debug a warning. But how about before we do this, instead of just giving up if it's not in the list, let's go ahead and look at the children game objects to see if we can find it. So inside of this, if comp equals null, let's go ahead and first say comp equals get component in children. And then the type that we want to look for is our generic T that we passed in. And now what we do is we simply do another null check before we throw this warning. So again, we just say if comp equals equals null, then throw this warning. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more robust. So in the case where the reference has not yet been set, we simply set the reference ourselves. But let's actually go ahead and just make this look a little bit prettier without so much nesting. So really what we want to do is after we call this line, if comp does not equal null, we want to return comp. So we'll say if comp, then return comp, which means if comp was not null, this function will end here and nothing after it will get called. So if comp is null, we'll continue executing. So that means we can actually get rid of this outer if statement like that. We then check to see if we can find it in the children. And then we can actually do the same thing again. So instead of if comp equals equals null, let's just say if comp, then return comp. And that means if comp is null, then we want to debug this warning. Now we need to return something by default anyway, but let's just instead of returning comp, let's just return null like that. So this really should take care of any sequencing issues that we might have. So I think we're basically ready to actually try it out. So let's come back to Unity. And now we need to add this death core component to all of our entities. So let's start with our player. I'll open that up, open up the core, create a new empty game object, and just call it death. We can then come to add component and look for our death core component. And over here you see we have our death particles. 
So let's go to our prefabs. And over here we have our death blood particles and our death chunk particles. So we want to add both of these to our death core component. Let's go ahead and lock the inspector so that we can select both of these. And then let's just drag them in over here. Okay, so with that added to our player, we can come to the death game object over here and just hit copy, then come to our enemy two, right click on core and say paste as child. And then do the same thing for our enemy one. Now it should work. Let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, let's head to our archer friend over here and he's gonna jump away from us. Let's just smack him a couple of times. I forget what I had their health set to, but there we go. He popped and died. Let's actually have the enemy one kill our player. <laughs> Again, not sure what I have the health set to, but there we go. Health is zero and our player dies. And if we go ahead and take a look at our hierarchy, you can see that our enemy two and our player have been disabled. Perfect. So that's the basics of the death core component. And with this, we're basically ready to start the new weapon system tutorials, the new and improved weapon system that I've been working on for a while. And I'm super excited to share with you guys. There is just going to be one more episode after this, where we're just going to clean up this project and get it ready for the weapon system. There's just a little bit of spring cleaning that needs to happen. And then we'll be ready to get started. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. And so before I go, I would just like to say thank you to all of my supporters and wonderful people over on Patreon. And a huge special thank you to Cody, SM, Madger, Jake, Patrick, Atami, Mike, and Rick for your support on Patreon. You guys are absolute mad lads. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.